welcome to the Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church worship service. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let us worship God together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Pleasant Valley, put your hands together as we come to give God a great praise. Psalm 145 and 3. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Come on, how many know we serve a great God? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, let's go. Great. Come on. He's a great God. Great God. Hands in the air. He's a great God. He's a great He's a great God. serve a great God. I'd like to invite Sister Smith to give us a welcome on this morning. Hello. Good morning, Pleasant Valley. We'd like to welcome all our first time visitors. Just wave your hand in the air. Welcome to Pleasant Valley. Members, we'd like you to make her feel welcome today. 
If you are searching for a church home or if you're searching for God, today you found your answer. We like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, how many want to invite the Lord into this place on this morning? The song says, Overflow in this place. Have your way in this place. We want more in this place. Have your way. Everybody sing overflow. Overflow in this place. Say it one more time, overflow. overflow in this place. Have your way in this place. We want more in this place. Have your way. Come on. We can't walk without you. We can't talk without you, Jesus. We can't live without you. Have your way. If you believe that, lift that up. We can't. We can't walk without you. Say. We can't talk no. We can't talk without you. Without you. We can't live yeah. We can't live without you. Without you. Have your way. Have your way. Come on, lift it up. Say we can't walk. Say we can't walk without you, Jesus. Without you. We can't talk no. We can't
Welcome at this time. We want to invite Reverend Nikki Carr to give us a prayer on this morning. Hallelujah. Let us join hands across the aisle. Let us bow our heads. O most gracious Heavenly Father, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, we come before you praising your holy and your righteous name. O oh Lord, we come asking for the Lord that, Lord, you will indwell let us or in us, O oh Lord. Because, Father, we realize, Father, Lord, that we cannot live without you. Lord, we can't walk. We can't eat. We can't do anything without you, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, have your way with us, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, we ask, Father, Lord, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us and direct us in the way you have us to go. O oh Lord, use us, Lord, as your tools here on earth, O oh Lord, to spread the good news about a true and a living Savior. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you will look down for the Lord on the whole world this morning, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I ask that you look down on our sick and our shut in, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you have mercy right now, O oh Lord. Oh, Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on Brother Rashad Arrington this morning, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, have mercy right now. Lord, thank you, oh, Lord, that the accident wasn't worse than it could have been, oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you right now, oh, Lord, for sparing his life, oh, Lord. But, Lord, we ask right now, for Lord, for your healing power. Oh, Lord, I ask for the Lord that you would use him, Lord, as your tool, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Allow him to give his will over to you, O oh Heavenly Father, and use him, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you would bless him and bless his family this morning. And O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on all the others who are sick and shut in this morning. Touch and heal if it's your will, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on our bereaved families this morning. Comfort them and be with them right now, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord do you have mercy right now, O oh Heavenly Father? Lord, I ask that you look down on lost souls everywhere this morning, those who don't know you. Oh Lord, I ask that you give them just a little bit more time, oh Lord, to accept you, O oh Heavenly Father, Lord, as their true and personal Savior. Now, Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on war-torn countries everywhere this morning, O oh Lord. Have mercy right now, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy on those who are suffering right now, O oh Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, we ask for your protection over them right now, oh, Lord. Look down on all of our world leaders, oh, Lord. Crown their heads with wisdom and knowledge. Lead them and direct them in the way you have them to go. And, oh, Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on our city this morning, oh, Lord. Have mercy right now, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, look down on all of our young people, oh, Lord, who don't know you, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, have mercy on them right now, oh, Lord. Touch their hearts and their minds this morning, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, empower us to go out and tell them about a true and a living Savior, O oh Lord. And O oh Lord, look down on churches everywhere doing your work and your will. Strengthen them and be with them right now, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, look down on Pleasant Valley this morning. Continue to bless it this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you look down on our pastor, O oh Heavenly Father. Bless him and keep him right now, O oh Lord. Bless his family this morning. Look down on all of our ministers. Look down on all of our, all of our officers and our members, O oh Lord. Bless us right now, O oh Lord. And, O oh Lord, as we come joining hands before the altar, Lord, those who come with prayers in their hearts this morning, O oh Lord, Lord, I ask that you will hear their prayers. And, Lord, within your will that you will answer their prayers, O oh Heavenly Father. And, O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you will bless this service today. Look down on the man of God as he comes with your word. Use him and speak through him this morning, O oh Lord. That someone can hear the word and come running saying, what must I do to be saved? O oh Lord, I ask for the Lord that you would strengthen us, O oh Lord, to be a beacon light to this community, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I, I, I ask for the Lord that you would give us the courage to go out and tell others about you, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, bless us and keep us right now. In your darling son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Come on, how many know we can live? Come on, we can walk. We can't talk without the spirit of Jesus. Come on, let us all lift that up. Come on, we can walk, say it. We can walk without you. Come on. Without Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, invite him in your hearts. Come on, how many know about that never failing, always abounding love of God, the love that's patient, the love that's kind? Can we talk a little bit about that love? Come on. I've never had anything as good as you And I don't think I ever will, no, no They tell me that real love's too good to be true But I ain't living in a fairy tale, no Cause if you've had it, then you know Cause if you had it, then you know it. What I'm talking about is love. Love. Have you ever felt it? When it comes from above. Above. Ain't nothing like it. Say I try. How many know about that love? Yeah. Patient, kind, gentle. Come on. It's patient, it's kind. Yeah, I tried, but I can't find no other love like mine. And I know, and I know, and I know, and I know it's patient, it's kind. Yeah, I tried, but I can't find no other love like mine. And I know, and I know, Come and on, I know it's patient.
Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm talking about is love. Clap your hands if you're experiencing that type of love. God bless you. God bless your praise team. Amen. God bless you on this morning. You may be seated all over the sanctuary. We thank God for all of you who are present here in the sanctuary with us. And to those who are worshiping with us online, we thank God for you this morning on this fifth Sunday of the month of July. We thank God for bringing us through all of the hot weather that we've experienced, God is still good unto us. Amen. God bless you on today. Uh, the church is open that we may spread the gospel message to those who may not know Jesus our Lord. The one who came from heaven, wrapped in flesh, God himself to save us all from doom. Amen. Clap your hands if you love Jesus on this morning. Amen. We thank God for you at this particular time. It's time to prepare to give unto the Lord. If you have not already done so, there are uh, envelopes in the pew uh, for your convenience. For those of you who would like to uh, give to the Lord by cash or by check, you can do that. Also, you can give by Givelify through a phone app uh, that goes directly to the church, Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, that's the way I give through Givelify. It keeps a uh, record of all of your gifts that you have given to the church. So uh, I recommend that you do it that way. Uh, and also you can do so by debit or credit card, uh, either your choice in the office. But we thank you for the gifts. The gifts are needed that we can keep the ministry moving forward according to the will of God. Also today, our youth store will be op open after service. We ask that you continue to support the youth store, that they can have funds to do events with our young people. To all church leaders, remember uh, we had a meeting online together concerning events that we want to take place in our church. You need to make sure that you see the church administrator that you can lock in your dates so we can get these events moving. We want to congratulate Brother Vince Williams, Jr., uh, UNO Classic Upward Bound Male Student of the Year, 2022. <laughs> and also, uh, Brother Andre Vonado, Jr., uh, is uh, the Matt Science Male Student of the Year, 2022. Amen. Uh, on this uh, coming month, August 21st, the third Sunday of this month, uh, the state convention installation service will take place at our church. We will serve as the host church, and uh, all of our music department is involved in this program. Uh, we will have our regular services that morning for 1030, but at 3 p.m., that special service will be taking place at our church, and all of you are invited uh, to come to that program, amen? So we want to support that program because we will have visitors from all over the state here in our church, uh, and it's nice that we are home when they come, amen? So we, we're looking forward to that. 
Uh, the women will be having a short meeting right after church concerning uh, one of the events that's coming up uh, that they need to get you ready for. Uh, so women, just for about five minutes right after church. Uh, also, uh, you're reminded concerning your Women's Day uh, commitment. See Sister Gwendolyn Bates or see Sister Belinda Smith today, amen? Uh, and women, you should know what that's referencing, amen? Uh, Reverend Carr mentioned uh, one of our members in his prayer, Brother Rashad Arrington. We want to pray for him. He had an accident in his cement truck. He drives a cement truck, and it flipped over, amen? Uh, and he has some broken ribs and uh, a broken ankle, and uh, we want to pray for him, amen? Uh, and I will be going to see about him, but I'm asking you to pray for him as he recover. He's still in good spirits on this morning, uh, and we were laughing with him on this morning, Reverend Carr and I. I told him I thought his wife beat him up. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Uh, so we want to uh, pray for him and remember him uh, this week in your prayers. Amen? God bless you. I think the praise team has another selection. And then a, a hymn and a selection. All right, it's time for you to sing. You've just been initiated in the choir. Get your hymn book. It should be right in front of you. Turn to page 387. 387. Go ahead. You're in the choir. Everybody stand and be prepared. First one, let us all sing, I am thine. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to I'm in here. to consecrate. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer. Draw me Verse 3, all the pure delight, all the pure delight of a single love that before thy throne I spent. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious. 
side. Come on, one more time. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to thy pleasure. you encourage the praise team this morning clap your hands encourage them amen beautiful job on my best day i'm a child of god but how many of us willing to say on my worst day i'm still a child of god every day is a good day i'm so blessed how many of you blessed this morning Amen. God bless you. We thank God for our music department. And we're looking forward to them doing more work in our community and in our state. Um, they're going to be very active uh, helping other churches in the state. Amen. So we're looking forward to um, that opportunity. 
and we want more of you to get involved in our choirs. Amen. It's a good opportunity for you to be part of a large auxiliary where you can offer praise unto the Lord and lead the entire church into praise. So we thank God for what they're doing and uh, we lift them up on this morning. Amen. All right. Um, I want to make sure that everybody have their own sermon notes. Um, every member, every child, we want all of your electronic equipment put away because we want you to hear from heaven on this morning. After all, that's one of the major reasons you came out here today. We came here to pray unto God. We came here to worship God. But the most important part of the service is to hear from God. How many of you need to hear from God? It's good to hear advice from other folk from time to time, but I need to hear from God sometimes. And this is God's way of speaking to us. Amen? Through his word. If you look at the artwork that's on the board, it says the minor prophets. Um, that's a section of the Old Testament Bible. And the reason they say minor is because the writings are short. It doesn't mean the writings are not important. They're very important, but they're just shorter than the other prophet writings or literary writings of the prophets. Today and for the next couple of weeks, the Lord is leading us to look at the book of Amos. And uh, God is speaking to us as a church, speaking to us as a people, and speaking to us as a nation. How many of us realize that now our nation is definitely on the wrong track. Don't take that lightly because history will teach you that when this happens, if the voice of the Lord is not heeded, destruction is on its way. Pay attention today as God speaks to us through his prophet. Let us stand. We're coming from a point of reference here, Amos 7, 14b and verse 15, where the prophet makes this declaration. He says, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. You may be seated. This preacher made the point that it's not about me. I'm a nobody. I was just a shepherd minding my own business, working my field, tending to sycamore fig trees. I didn't have you on my mind. I was doing my work. But God, tell your neighbor, but God. But God sent me to prophesy to you, Israel. Write this in as a subject. An ancient message, message for a modern world. An ancient message that the world now ignores. 
There, there are those who will tell you, you don't need to pay attention to that stuff. But this message is good then and is good right now. We serve a God that has no need to ever change. We serve a God that gets it right the first time. God can speak millions of years ago and it can be relevant for us right now. So today's message will serve as the first of three sermons or words of prophecy given to and spoken by the prophet Amos. Now one scholar said with regards to this prophet, you can call him a rabble rouser. You could even call him a preacher of doom or maybe a fig picking shepherd with judgment on his mind, but don't call him a prophet, especially a career prophet. You see, my brothers and sisters, if you ever studied this particular prophet, you would learn that Amos didn't want to be called a prophet if you would read his words in the seventh chapter of this same book you would understand his heart, and that's where our text came from on this morning, his heart speaking, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. My daddy wasn't even a preacher, but I was a shepherd and I also took care of the sycamore fig trees, but the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people, Israel. It reminds me of my father, Pete Vonado. Pete Vonado wasn't a prophet. Neither was he trying to be one. Neither was his daddy one. But I'm a witness today that God called him and told him, you go to Pleasant Valley and prophesy to my people. And God did some amazing things at that time so that the people would know that I called him. I sent him to prophesy to you. So Amos, like my father, did what he was told. His ministry is manifested during the years of 760 and 750 B.C. The striking metaphors and dynamic themes of this book of Amos made, made it one of the most familiar of all the minor prophets. He lived down in the southern kingdom of Judah, but he left his home and fields, which were about 11 miles south of Jerusalem, and he traveled north to the northern kingdom to warn the people there, that they have allowed their prosperity to deceive them. They have allowed their greed for material items to turn their hearts away from God and his instructions. Doesn't that remind you of us? Isn't it funny that when we had less, we worshiped more? When we didn't have much, we went to the church every time the doors were open. But now that God has blessed us, we have turned our backs on God. Look at the church even right now. There was a time that not only the bottom floor would be full, but the choir stand and the balcony. What is going on in America? What is going on with our people? It seems that more of our children have graduated college than ever before. More of our children have good jobs, we call them now. But they have allowed these things to become their God. 
They have allowed their material things to come into their lives and it allowed and have allowed it to replace God in their hearts. Amos' main concern was justice among God's people. You see, just like us, their spiritual failures resulted in ongoing injustice within the nation of Israel itself. They will hear this preacher from the south, this preacher of doom, prophesy that they have allowed their idolatrous ways to earn for them God's fierce judgment. Where are we today, America, as we celebrate the decisions made by the Supreme Court, as we celebrate, as we walk totally against the will of God, and we have a party. Well, is that the end? Will God sit by silently and say nothing? I doubt that, but we ought to be more concerned about what God's going to do about it. How many of you know God's going to do something about it? It happens throughout history, and it's happening right now. There's a clear sign that it has already happened to America. When we celebrate marriages that shouldn't happen in our country, it has already began. That's the sign. When God turned you over to a reprobated mind, it has already begun. Destruction has already started. How many of you have ever heard of self-destruction? It has already began. All God needs to do is step away from us and destruction is inevitable. Do I have a witness in here? Write this note down. Injustice fosters, I don't know what needs to be written in, maybe nothing. Injustice fosters hostility, hatred, jealousy, and rage. Maybe you haven't heard, but the police are leaving the New Orleans Police Department in Groves. They're leaving. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist uh, to understand the mind of a criminal uh, if the law is no longer there. If it takes the law now two hours to show up to a scene, do I have a witness in here? That gives me plenty of time to commit the crime. I don't have a, a witness in here. Where are you going to run, old sinner? Where are you going to run? All God needs to do is step back. And you will have no protection. God is your protection. Justice, on the other hand, fosters loving kindness, care, and service. You see, God's people are to be marked by justice because God acts justly toward his people. So they will hear this preacher of doom prophesy. And we will as well. But first, let's look at the privileges of Israel. Think about your privileges in God. What are some of your privileges that you experience because you are with God. They were indeed privileged. They were the chosen people. They were called God's people. Are we not called the children of God? It's a privilege to be a child of God. How many of you understand that it's a privilege that you have to get on your knees and talk to God. 
Uh, I mean, you ought not take that for granted. Uh, you ought to be pleased by the fact that you have direct access to the Father. A songwriter said, oh, what needless pain we bear. All we need to do is take it to God in prayer. But many of us forsake prayer. Many of us suffer needlessly because we're privileged to have access to God. They were privileged. It was a fact. The nation had settled into a period of extraordinary prosperity. Now, how did this come about? Well, for those of you who are studying with me in Bible class, we have learned of a group called the Arameans. I mean, they were a thorn in the side of the Israelites, that northern kingdom. Well, at the time of today's message, at the time of this text, the reason the Israelites are experiencing this extraordinary period of prosperity is because their longtime antagonist, their thorn in their side, is now off the scene. However, God's bountiful provision to the nation of Israel produced a spirit of superiority between the new wealthy, the new wealthy, and those whom they were called to show love. How many of us realize, if, as we look around the room, that we are now the new wealthy? You know, some of us say, well, pastor, I'm not. Wealthy? Well, that's because you're comparing yourself to uh, Oprah, maybe. And, and you're not Oprah wealthy. But to some poor in the world, you are rich. How many of you have carpet on the floor? You're rich. How many of you have air condition in your home? You're rich. How many of you have shoes to wear? More shoes than you can wear. You're rich. The new upper class, bolstered by the prosperity brought about under the rule of Jeroboam II, neglected, however, their social responsibility to care for their own countrymen. I mean, they were doing good. They were doing so good that they felt that they no longer needed a standing army. And we can use or funnel these resources, they would say, into business pursuits. We can expand our trade routes. And we can now finally reap some skyrocketing profits. Some of us are feeling the same way today. More of us are now in business than ever before. And now we, we have television specials bragging and boasting about our wealth. We don't want to just be rich. We want to be wealthy. And we define the difference. We say rich is just for your generation. But we want to be generationally wealthy. I mean, we want to leave some stuff for our children and our grandchildren. Uh, we don't want them to experience what we experience. Somebody say, well, pastor, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it if you keep God in the mix. The problem is you begin to get so wealthy now that you determine in your mind that I don't need church no more. I'm not talking about just making it. Not talking about just living good. I'm not even talking about just being rich. Generationally rich. I mean, I want my children to be born with a silver spoon in their mouth. This is what we hear today from the new rich. People now feeling that they need to tap into this wealth. 
I mean, we can now get educations. We can now own our own businesses. We can now live in affluent neighborhoods. I, I like this idea, they say, of not just being rich, but being wealthy. I mean, they were doing so good. The commoners I'm talking about were no longer common. The common folk like you and I, they were doing good. Common folk enjoying new wealth. Three-story homes. Luxury automobiles. Name brand clothing. Owning your own building. Not buying someone else's home, but building it from the ground now. But not a house, but a mansion. A one, at one time, this belonged to the noble class. But in Israel, now the common folk are wealthy. Ask your neighbor, are you wealthy yet? Go ahead and ask them. I'm working on it. Listen. Hear this word. People of Israel. People of America. People of Pleasant Valley. Hear this word. The word the Lord has spoken against you, against the whole family I brought up out of Egypt. What is going on here? What does the Lord have to say? Why is he talking about old times? Why is he talking about slavery? Our children don't even want to hear about roots. They don't want to visit the civil rights museums. I don't want to hear about all of that old stuff. Some of you old folk don't want to hear it either. Why are you bringing up the Egypt story again? You see, Israel's relationship to God makes their wicked behavior astounding. God had rescued them from Egypt and entered them into covenant with him. What they forgot was Along with covenant promise comes covenant responsibility. How many of you remember that there was a day that we as African Americans were slaves in this country? Somebody say we was? Oh yeah. How many of you are glad that we're free today? But with freedom comes responsibility. Write this down, note number two. Bring that home with you. When there is a covenant promise, there's always covenant responsibility. Israel's special relationship, God's people, your special relationship, the children of God, with the Lord did not result in immunity from the Lord's judgment. Don't you think for one second, because you are a Christian, that you can escape God's judgment for your sins? The Apostle Paul says, shall I continue in sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. Instead, the Israelites should have remembered his suzerainty covenant. And that means between two unequal parties that formed the basis for God's judgment of his people. Do you remember the covenant? If God had not judged his people, he would have been in violation of his own covenant. The scripture says a man will reap what he sows. 
If you don't reap what you sow, then God is alive. So whatever you sow, I believe Reverend Carl said, you could sow some good stuff last week. You don't have to sow bad stuff, but if you sow the bad stuff, the expectation should be, I sold it. They say, if you're big enough to do the crime, do I have a witness in here? Look at Amos, verse 2. You only, God says, have I chosen, Israel, of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your sins. Here, God even declares that of all the nations of earth, he has known only them. I chose you. So something here isn't going right. Something here does not sit well with the Lord. Have our blessings deceived us? Is God happy with us? I mean, it is no secret we are doing better than we have ever done in our American history. I mean, if you would ask my grandfather, we called him Pepe. I mean, if he saw our homes today, if he saw the cars we are driving, if Papa saw the degrees we have on the wall, if he saw the extravagant vacations we take, the mountain trips, the cruises we ride, the overseas getaway, I even heard some folk on the news going to London to see the Saints lose. African Americans now got money to go to London to see a football game. I can't afford to see the game in New Orleans. Pepe will be amazed at how good we are living. Do I have a few witnesses? Anybody got some grandparents that will be shocked? They would be blown away at our car notes. You pay that much money for your car note? He would admit that we are truly blessed. I mean, our children have phones in a closet full of clothes. Our children have their own flat screen TV. Our children have their own computers and laptops and tablets. Pepe wouldn't know where he was. They can hardly pay attention in church or anywhere else because they are focused on their tablets now. And we bring the tablets for them. And we say, so they'll keep quiet. What happened to the belt? We didn't have tablets. We just had mama with a set of eyes. Mama didn't even need to take the belt out. Mama had a look on her face that said, you better be quiet right now. But we're so blessed, right? We're blessed. We're blessed. We feel proud walking with our children and they got their own tablet. That makes us feel wealthy. We all focused on our technology. Pepe would say, man, look at the stuff y'all got. But is our prosperity lying to us? Look at this rhetorical question that the Lord asks. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Now, I need you to understand. God always asks a question to make you think. It's not about just you blurting out an answer. You see, we're privileged, but it's God pleased. 
God says, all that you have, has it caused you to turn your back on my ways? Are you sitting in my church, raising your hands in my face, but yet living opposite of what I instructed? So God asks us a question. It's a rhetorical question. This is one out of seven of the same type rhetorical questions that we are gonna look at today. This particular style that is used by the prophet, this form rhetorical is intentionally used to persuade his audience. There's no audible answer, but used to cause the reader to pause and think about the question. These questions reveal that the events will definitely happen. I'm standing right here. And I'm telling you, America is in trouble. And somebody is saying, no, we're not. We're doing good. But God is saying, it's definitely coming. So this style or type makes us think. Once one event happens or takes place, the second will surely follow. Now, first, we agree. Hey, you want to take a walk? Don't that have to happen first? That is first. What follows is that they take the walk. But the second one can't happen until the first happens. Amos was showing here that God's revelation to him was the sure sign that judgment is coming. It's coming. We're still shacking up. We're still committing fornication. We're still getting pregnant out of wedlock. We're still committing homosexual acts. And we're promoting it now. My son-in-law who works in the school system sent me a book that says Gay BC. Not ABC. But Gay BC in the book tells the young people to say it loud, brag about it, be proud that you like the opposite, I mean the same sex. Promoting it. Is God going to sit still and do nothing? So let's look at the perversions of Israel. What has this idolatrous spirit, this materialistic passion done to our hearts? Good parents, bad parents, keep your hands down. Good parents, how many of you know you shouldn't give children everything they want? How many of y'all know that's a bad thing to do? You wouldn't do that, right? I mean, because that would ruin the child. Am I right about it? Now, they got some other parents who say, I give them everything they ask for because I think I love them and they deserve it. Why they deserve it? Have we placed all of our attention on this stuff and lost our way? Have we gotten distracted and have lost our love for God? Now, let me say here that the people of Israel knew how God wanted them to act. They were not in ignorance. Yet they chose to sin anyway. Raise your hand if you know adultery is wrong. How many of you heard adultery is wrong? 
cheating on your spouse. How many of y'all know that's wrong? Does that stop people from doing it? Yet they chose to sin anyhow. They knew the laws and the consequences even for disobedience, yet they still, as we do today, ignored God. I wasn't allowed to even ignore my own parents. If my father would say, Reginald, and I wouldn't respond, that could cause some problems in the house. Have any of your parents say, I know you hear me talking to you. I mean, you didn't even say nothing. All you said was their name. I know Beverly didn't play that with you, Ronnie. When she said, Ronnie, you had to say, yes, ma'am. I mean, if you just act as if she didn't even say something, that would cause some problems. Well, what about God? Are we acting as if he's not saying anything? You don't even play that with your parents. Write this in. Continual. That's the key word here. We only have seven notes, so don't y'all rush me. Continual sinning. All of us mess up from time to time. We're human. But continual sinning will cause us to lose the ability to know right from wrong. See, when you just keep doing it, you lose that part of your mind where you don't know right from wrong anymore in no area of life. You can't make good decisions no more. Everybody else notice it but you. You're the last to find it out. Have you looked back over your life and said, I must have just lost my mind. I knew I shouldn't have moved in with Ricky. What in the world was I doing? What was I thinking? Why would I do that? Have you ever asked yourself that? What was wrong with you? You lost it because you continued in sin. In other words, if we engage in our sin and don't expect the consequences, we become blind to the truth. We begin to believe the lie we have placed in our own heads. We become perverted. We begin to say that God want me to have these things and he understands what I must do to get them. I have to work now, Rev. I have to go out of town now, Rev. I have to engage with my coworkers now. So I do not have time for the business of the church. I cannot support all of the standards of God any longer. I am in the world now. I moved up. I've made it. I'm blessed. I am the senior of this and the president of that. I am Dr. Strange now. And you folk over there at that old church, y'all jealous of me. Because I'm well noted now. I do not have time to sing in that choir. I don't have time for choir rehearsals. My week is busy. I don't have time 
to serve in no capacity because I'm Mr. Man now. And I'm Mrs. Wealthy. We have gotten to the point now that we can, we can't decipher right from wrong. The Israelites had persisted in sin for so long that it became second nature to them. We all have our privileges and all our material blessings. We cannot see the importance of bringing our children to Sunday school any longer. I can teach him that stuff at my house. I can have church at my own house. I have a nice house. My house looks better than the church. My furniture costs more than the pews at the church. I'm living good. I could worship the Lord with my new sound system and not that raggedy system they have at the church. I got surround sound. I got a bass system that'll make the church system sound like trash. You hear clarity in my sound system. And we can worship the Lord at our new breakfast nook and at our countertop and in our family room and our weight room and our TV room and our playroom and our new sunroom. Somebody say, I don't have a sunroom. One pastor say, just open the blinds and it becomes a sunroom. Write this in. Look at this, I'm sorry. Amos 3.10a. God says, they do not know how to do right. Declares who? Who's saying we don't know how to do right? Is it Reverend Vaughn or no? We don't even know how to come to church no more. Look at us. Look at us. Those of you who've been with Pleasant Valley for a long time, look at us. Those who were raised in Sunday school, where they at now? They don't know how to do right. Who store up in their fortresses what they have plundered and looted. The people of Israel and God's people today are no longer new or know today how to do what is right, God says. People who have grown up in the church are so confused today, they don't even know what religion to follow. People who have studied the word, took sermon notes for years, went to Sunday school, participated in youth programs, are so confused now, they don't even know how to comb their hair. don't know how to wear their clothes. Anytime you gotta pull your pants up 20 times a day, you need a belt. I mean, if you gotta keep Reverend Carl pulling them up, buy a belt, huh? When you can't carry the groceries to the car because you got to take one hand to hold your pants. They don't know right from wrong. The more the Israelites sinned, the more difficult it became to remember what God wanted. The same is true for us. The longer we wait to deal with our sin, the greater the hold it has on us. I'm going to say that line again. The longer we wait 
How many of you ever remember a time you sinned? Come on, just any time. I don't care what it was. How many of you remember you were sinning? You knew it. The longer you wait to deal with that, the greater the hold it has on you. And then says the Lord, we forgot what is right and we forgot the importance of doing what is right. Doing right becomes not so important no longer. Are you on the verge of forgetting? Let's look at the prophecy now. Y'all holding me up, hurry up. Write note number four in. Leading up to another of these questions that God asks. God will roar out his wrath as a hungry lion when his people fail to listen to his words. God's prophets before Amos, Sister Tammy, before Amos, God had many prophets. They had warned the people of Israel on a regular basis. And they had all seen the pain suffered by their ancestors for their disobedience. We too receive regular warnings. Even in anger, God is merciful. Warnings about sin today are shunned, uninvited, almost prohibited by corrupt laws in our land. They warn the teachers, you better not say nothing about the little girl who wants to be a boy. We warn you, if you do, you're going to lose your job. One governor said, if I hear of a preacher preaching against homosexuality, I will have him arrested. They don't want to hear the warning. But the church is commissioned to warn, to tell them, even when they don't want to hear it. Some of you are too soft. I just, I just don't think it's none of my business. I don't think I should butt in. They grown now. When, if they were been at home, I would have told them, you're alive. You didn't tell them then. That's why they grown and crazy. You didn't want them when they were at home. 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Read this with me. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will what? The living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. When? Be prepared when? And when else? Do what? Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. But I charge you, preach the word. Correct them. Rebuke them when you need to. Tell them that ain't right. Don't have a smile on your face when something's wrong. If a child is about to touch fire, who's going to go over there smiling? Something's wrong with you. We must preach. Because in the end, God will judge the living and the dead. We are charged by God to preach what thus says the Lord. We are to serve the Lord as watchmen, watching out for souls. And if the watchmen fail to warn, let's look at that, hold up. Look at this, Ezekiel 3.18. Now, a watchman was a person who stood at the gate. His sole job was to watch. And if 
problem was coming toward the gate, danger, he was to warn the people. They would execute a watchman who would fall asleep on the job. Do you know how serious your job is? You're asleep. We could have been attacked. Some of you got the job to be a security guard and talking about, should I take me a nap every now and then? <laughs> what? The security guard take a nap? It, it's late in the afternoon. It's early 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when the criminal go out. I take me a good nap, I ain't gonna lie. You need to be fired. That's how we sound as the church. We taking naps. We resting. We talking about that ain't none of our business. Look at Ezekiel 3.18 with me, it says, if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require your hand. He said, if I say, listen now, if I say what they're doing is going to lead them to go straight to hell, if I said that and you don't want them, what kind of preacher would I be if I never warn you? What kind of pastor would I be if I never tell you that you're headed in the wrong direction? You're headed toward danger. You're going to destroy yourself if I never told you. If all I wanted was your money. Sweetheart, my beautiful membership, I love all of you. The Lord's going to bless all of you. You're great. You're wonderful. Just to get your money. Both of us are fools. I'm a fool for not warning you because I'm going to have to answer. And you're a fool for sitting under me. I want somebody to tell me the truth. I don't want to go to a doctor and I'm sick and he says, oh man, you're doing great. <laughs> I mean, man, I, I, know, I know you say you're in pain, but I don't see nothing. The charts look great. Like, man, you don't know what you're doing. How many of y'all know we got some sin problems? Come on, just be honest. Now, what kind of church you want to go to, they never mention them. That's why I don't like going to that church. They're always talking about my sin. Duh! Write this in. The wicked. Who are the wicked? A witch on a broom? No, you ain't got to be a, on a broom and all that. No. That's why some of y'all think you're not wicked. Those who walk contrary to the word of God and thereby set for themselves a terrible day of God's wrath. You're wicked to yourself. You are playing yourself. You are injuring yourself. And God calls that wicked. In the end, you hurt yourself. Now think about that. Remember, one will follow the other. Remember the rhetorical question? Contrary walking will be followed by God's wrath. I'm going to say that slower. Contrary walking will be followed by God's wrath. 
Do not, Israel, take lightly the warnings in God's word about judgment. His warnings are there and it's God's way of showing mercy to you. How evil are some of you? If you see me walking to the end of this stage and I'm looking at all of y'all, and the Lord is good, Lord is good, and y'all watch, watch, girl, watch, you gonna fall right off the stage, watch, watch. Watch that fool. And the Lord had to go, girl, watch, watch. What kind of wicked people are you? Girl, give him enough rope, he'll hang himself. What kind of Christians are you? Goodness gracious. Thank God for the red light system. The lights are designed to warn us, right? That yellow light is there to warn you that you need to prepare to stop, not speed up, you dummy. Girl, it's yellow. That's not what it means. Oh, my God. What's wrong with y'all? We even get angry when the lights turn yellow. Oh my Lord, God, run! I don't know why they hit me. They saw me coming. Oh my God, shut up. Listen to God with the rhetorical questions. Think about it. He just wants you to think. Just, just think. Does a lion roar in the thicket when it has no prey? Does it growl in its den when it has caught nothing? No. He catch it first. Then he growl. That's because he's not a dummy. He's not going to give it away. Roar! Everything going to run. Like, Get out of here! No, he sneak up on you, right? You think you can fool a pastor? Pastor, I don't know how all this hell broke loose. He snuck up on you, didn't he? Now it's rowing. All hell um, broke loose in your life, haven't it? That's because you was tiptoeing. Doing stuff in the dark. Lying, cheating, sneaking. Bam! Pastor, pastor. I'm like, don't call me, I'm tired. I've been warning you and warning you and warning you. Now the lion roaring, ain't he? Anybody ever heard a lion roar? Man. He can be behind a cage and you run, right? Man. It's going to happen. Does a bird swoop down to a trap on the ground when no bait is there? Does a trap spring up from the ground if it has not caught anything? A bird will not just meander in, in a trap. He's not just strolling around, looking, walking across your trap. You have to put something in there to draw him. I don't know how I got in this trouble. You was drawn into it. You know exactly how you got in that trouble. You can write it down step by step. Does God punish without a cause? Just to punish? I don't know why I'm going through 
I don't know if the Lord don't love me or something. You've been living with Ricky for 15 years out of wedlock. Now you don't know something now. Pastor been telling you, calling you all in the office, y'all need to get married. You need to mind your so-and-so business. That's what you need to do. What kind of pastor you supposed to be. And then Ricky dies. And y'all done bought all that stuff. And here come Ricky children, all 17 of them. All of them at the funeral, Reverend Carl. Mad. This how the pastor know who they are. They sit like this. Because if she think she going to keep my daddy's stuff. Now you cry. I'm sitting there like, cross her and puzzle. <laughs> All hell breaking loose. And they got papers. You ain't got no evidence. Where my daddy gold chain at? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. They ain't gonna know about all the jury. Where's pinky ring at? Does God punish without a cause? There was something there that caused it. Sin is the bait. Sin is the thing that drew God's attention. Sin is the thing that caused your problems. Stop saying, why me? You know why. I don't want a mouse trap to be going off and it ain't caught nothing. Don't that burn you up? I mean, you set the trap, three o'clock in the morning, pat! You're like, ooh, we got him, we got him! You go in there, the cheese gone and the mouse ain't there. That's how some of y'all live. God is warning you. It ain't gonna work for you. It ain't gonna work. You ain't gonna catch that man with your cheese. Oh, God. I'm gonna get him. No, you ain't. You gonna get God. That's what's gonna happen. Now, I'm, I'm prophesying. Y'all laugh. <laughs> You gonna get God. You ain't winning. You're losing. Lord, help me, Lord. Read this with me. Do not be deceived. God cannot. Look, it, it can't happen. Cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whosoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh. Wait a minute. Hold up. Stop preaching. Where the pain going to happen at? <laughs> that same pleasure. My, my father just spoke to me. That same thing that brought you pleasure. It's going to be the same thing that bring you pain. That's quote unquote Pete Varnado. 
that same thing. I know I'm supposed to say thing, but P say thing. That brought you pleasure. It's right there. Whoever souls to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever souls to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Amos 3, 4, 9. Another question. When a trumpet sounds in a city, do not the people tremble? Now that's the, the guy warning, now that, the guy on the gate. If he blow the trumpet. Hello? When you hear the trumpet sound, you know something's up. Come on now, I'm trying to talk to you. Do y'all hear the trumpet now? Is the trumpet sounding? Can't you tell something's up? I'm talking to y'all. Can you tell something's up? Are y'all paying attention? Are your ears closed? Are your eyes blind? When a trumpet sounds in the city, do not the people tremble? Watch this part of it. When disaster comes to a city, as not who? See, there ain't nothing but the devil. Might not be. Might not be. Your trouble, you giving the devil power. The devil like, hey, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Hey, wait a minute. Thank you for the credit, but it wasn't me. Has not the Lord caused it? See, the trumpet was a warning from the watchman. If you hear the trumpet, you would know that the city was under attack. Do you hear what I hear? When you watch the news, what y'all hearing? The trumpet is sounding. Murder on the street. Fornication in the church. Adultery in the church. In the church. Divorce in the church. Homosexuality in the church. Do you hear the warning? Idolatry, division, Democrat, Republican, racism. Do y'all hear it? Now, the first six questions did not require an answer, but this seventh question does. Can God bring disaster? What do you think about God? Well, God's so loving. He's so kind. He would hurt no one. What Bible are you reading? Are you reading the same Bible? I, I would like a copy of that edition that you're reading because my Bible over and over and over over and over. It's the same thing. Chastisement. Punishment. All to try to get you right back in line. Isaiah 4, 45 and 7 says, God says, I formed the light. Now this part of the Bible y'all skipped. I create darkness. Y'all saying amen, amen. Night and day, Lord, go ahead. I make peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. But say amen to this one. And create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I put that hell in your life. 
I got you fired off your job. I broke in your house and stole your junk. I put that disobedience in your children's heart. I did it because you turned your back on me. So I had to take some stuff from you. Why y'all looking at me like I'm crazy? Y'all do the same thing. You bought them children all that stuff for Christmas. And you say, oh, Sally, get them and wash the dishes. I get to them when I feel like it. I'm playing with my new game set. You bought the game set, didn't you? But you take the game set you bought, go to the back door, throw the game set out the door. Now go wash my dishes. You do that. Where you get that kind of attitude from? God. Now you punk parents. Okay, Sally. Whenever you can get to it, I appreciate it. Parents like me can't sit around when you're saying that kind of stuff. I'm like, what, what, what? I got to go. I got to go. Get, come on, April, let's get out of here. I can't handle that. I can't handle men going to the boys. Back. Hey, boys, y'all get them cut that grass. Man, I ain't cut no grass. Well, I'll do it by myself this time. I got to go. I got to go. I can't handle that. Well, God ain't like you with that mess. Them I love. I brought that evil in your house. I brought that evil in the nation. I created Trump. I made him. In the same way I made Pharaoh. I created Trump. Surely, the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the preachers. If I'd have knew, if I'd have only knew that was wrong, I wouldn't have did, stop lying. God warned you. Stop lying. If I could have, should have, would have. Stop lying. Nobody never told. Stop lying. He told you. You ignored him. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? I'm telling y'all today, the sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Y'all with me? First Corinthians 1, 18 through 31. For the preaching of the cross, this type of preaching, truth preaching, cross preaching, is to them that perish, what they call this. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is this disputer of this work? I'm not concerned about the young 
who are online claiming to be wise, for they think they're the first ones to do this. This has been going on since the beginning of time. It started in the garden where Satan disputed the words of God with Eve. You're not the first, and you will not succeed. You will not win. There's a place designed for you. Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You see, Reb, the way I see it, who cares? I'm not even interested in the way I see it. I'm only interested in the way God sees it. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that when you thought you were so smart, you miss the way to heaven because you were smarter than the preacher. You're so smart, you earned your way straight to hell. Go ahead on, you genius. You're smarter than the church. I done grew past that now. I have a degree from a school. You idiot. If the people at the school don't know God, what good is the school? I don't need to go to church now. You idiot. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be saying stuff like that, especially online, Reverend Carl. You wise people. You geniuses. Paul says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Amos goes back and says, the Lord says, proclaim to the fortresses of Ashdod and to the fortresses of Egypt. That's their enemy. He said, tell the enemy come see something. Egypt! Y'all know I'm going to take care of y'all too. I'm going to punish you and punish everybody who do evil, but come see something. Come over here, Egypt. All you from up north, the enemies of Israel, come over here. I want y'all to see something. Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria. See the great unrest within her and the oppression among her people. Watch what I do to my own people. Now, that may sound strange to you, but how many of you had a parent say, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to whip you at home. How many of you said, you showed out right here? It's right here. I'm going to show out. Anybody have parents say stuff like that? Go ahead. You think you crazy? How many parents say, I'm going to show you. You don't want God to show you crazy. You think you crazy? Don't let God get crazy. Because God get crazy in front of everybody. Everybody at the hospital shaking their head looking at you. Oh, my word. My God! 
you're more embarrassed than anything else. I'm going to be at church Sunday, Pastor. If you can get there. Make it if you can. There are plenty of times you could have came in your own strength, but you got somebody to help you? I, 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 I think I'm going to get my, my, my children to come over here, but they don't go to church either. I'm, I'm going to call them. I hope somebody can come get me. Write this in. We got two notes and we're done. If we continue to disregard the warning of God, trouble will come upon us. That's to you, that's to this church, that's to this city, that's to this state, that's to this country, that's to this world. All right, let's finish it up quickly. Y'all ready? Finish it up? Let's finish it up. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. An enemy will overrun your land. He's warning Israel. Pull down your strongholds and plunder your fortresses. Y'all ready to finish? This is what the Lord says. As a shepherd rescues from the lion's mouth only two leg bones or a piece of an ear, so will the Israelites living in Samaria be rescued with only the head of a bed and a piece of fabric from a couch. It's going to be terrible. You won't have nothing left. Can God strip you? How many of y'all came over for Katrina and, and realized he could? He can do it, can he? Hear this and testify against the descendants, Egypt. Egypt, hear this. And Jacob declares the Lord, the Lord God Almighty. On that day of punishment, Israel, uh, on that day I punish Israel for her sins, I will destroy the altars of Bethel. Those in Old, in Old Testament class know uh, that Jeroboam the first built two altars, one in the north and the south, right? And they were practicing idolatry at those places. God said, I'm going to tear that down. The horns of the altar will be cut off and fall to the ground. Write your last note in. If I can get to it. If we continue to disregard the warning of God, we will lose our blessings. It's all right to be blessed. It's all right to have some nice stuff and some nice homes and nice automobiles. It's nice. But don't put that stuff before God. Here it is, last scripture. I will, not Satan, I will tear down the winter house. Some of y'all got winter houses. Along with the summer house. Y'all laughing, but they got some people living like this. But they ain't got time for church no more. They in London going to see the saints lose. The houses adorned with ivory will be destroyed, and the mansions will be demolished, declares the Lord. That's a message to the believers. Don't live as a child of God without God. Keep God in his proper place, and he will bless you for doing so. Keep your priorities in order. Understand who God is and never put him on the back burner. Get your life in order. Warn others in your family, your friends and your neighbors. Don't forget about God. This nation is in need of a revival. We need to return to God before we have our day like Ukraine. 
You don't want it, my brothers and sisters. And don't say, well, we well protected. We got two oceans pr protecting us. When God get ready, he can bring America to her knees. Don't forget it. Stay with the Lord. Stand on your feet and give the Lord a hand for his warning. If you would like to be a member of this church, you can do that right now. You can come forward, give the preacher a hand, and give God your heart. If you would like to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, do that today. Don't put it off. The songwriter says, come while you have time. Come on, help us sing that. Lift your voices. Sing it with energy. Invite someone to the Lord. Oh, why don't you come? Come on, why don't you come unto the Lord? Don't put it off. We want you to come. Come in and accept him as your personal Savior. Come on, do it right now. Come on up. Come on. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Clap your hands as she come. Come on. Is there another one who need to come? Come on. Don't put it off. Make up your mind. Make up. Make up your mind. He will. He'll make your life brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Oh, he will. He will. He'll take good care of you, but you need to come. He'll take good care of you. Why don't you come? Come. Come to Jesus. While you have time, if you feel the spirit tugging in your heart, why don't you come while you have Thank God for his holy word, a word of warning. Keep us on the right track. Oh, come unto Jesus. Why? you have time oh why don't you come unto Jesus make the right decision right now Jesus said tomorrow is not promised take care of today right now A brand new life. According to his holy word, why don't you come? He will take care of you. He'll take good care of you, but you got to come. Surrender to Christ. While you have time. While you have, amen, you may be seated while we accept our member. Let the church say amen. I'm happy to announce that we have Lindsay Valentine. She's coming to us as a candidate for baptism. Amen, amen. God bless you, sister. We're so excited. Heaven is rejoicing right now. Amen. They're shouting all over heaven for this one soul that have come unto the Lord. Now, what that means is, sister, that you are now categorized as saved. You're saved. Meaning that if anything happens to you from this time forward, you don't have to worry because God's got your life. Your, your, your name is written in the book of life. You're on your way to heaven. God bless y'all. Clap your hands for her. Amen.
Now, from this day forward, you become a disciple, meaning a student of the Lord. You got to learn your new life now in Christ. We're going to baptize you, which is a, a, a symbol of what has already happened in your heart. And we're going to celebrate with you on that day. We're going to rejoice and give God the glory for saving you all today. Y'all clap your hands one more time. Amen. We're so excited and happy for what God is doing. Amen. And we want all of you to accept the Lord in your heart. God is about the heart. The rest of it he can take care of. He can straighten out all those other little errors we have. That's nothing for him to do. But give him your heart first, and he'll do the rest. God bless you. Amen. The song says, let the church say amen. Remember, women, we're having a five-minute meeting up front. Remember, let us stand. Women up front, uh, the rest of you, please remember to support the youth store. Amen. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all until we meet again in the church respond. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Women, please come up quickly. All the women, come up to the front few pews, please. All the women. Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church would like to thank all of our online viewers for worshiping with us. We hope that you enjoy our online worship experience. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share to help spread the word of God and receive notifications of future online experiences.